Ever wonder what are the best part-time jobs international students can get? How much do they pay? Well, if you watch this full video, you will know. Thanks a lot guys for supporting my previous videos and commenting on it and sharing a lot of positive feedback. It means a lot to me and I'm really glad to see that it's helping you guys out. Listen, if you have any questions, reach out to me on Instagram, comment below. I'm always happy to get back to you. I hope I'm getting back to every single person who DMs me on Instagram and if I don't, let me know. For those of you who are new to this channel, I'm Z and I make videos for students planning to study overseas and become international students. I share with you tips and tricks on how to become an international student in Canada and how to pursue a successful career and basically to show you the lifestyle of an international student. So make sure to subscribe and like this video so it motivates me to keep making more videos like this. For example, next week I'll be posting a video on what are the best scholarship programs for international students in Canada. I've noticed a lot of you ask me questions regarding what are the costs of studying in Canada? Is it gonna be between $20,000 or $30,000? Hey, I made it easier for you. In the description, there is an ebook, which is a detailed guide of all the costs associated with your studies in Canada and also a university tuition fee sample statement that can really help you know what is the exact cost that you can expect and the breakdown of that cost. So download that, link is in the description. It will really help you out with all your questions. Okay, let's get into today's video. So what are the best part-time jobs international students can get while they're in university or in college? So here's the thing guys, most students they study and they completely forget their end goal. Your end goal is to pursue a successful career. The goal isn't to just graduate and sit with your graduation certificate and put it on a wall. You want to make money, you want to land a great job. The success factor is how quickly do you land a job after graduation and how much money are you making, right? Most students think I'm gonna get good grades and I'm gonna just land a great job. It just doesn't work like that. So just the way you work hard towards getting good grades, you need to work hard to get a good job. You need to have a solid plan, you need to have a good strategy as to how you're gonna land the perfect job after you excel in your academics in school. And if you never keep your eyes on the prize, which is getting a good job, it might not work out and you might end up being lost and settling for a job that you might not like or you might not want in the first place. So what do you do? you watch this video. In this video, I'm about to show you the techniques that no one has ever shared with you before and it basically came through a lot of experimenting. I was a recruiter before, so I know what recruiters want and how to really get jobs and stand out from the people who has no idea how to apply for jobs. Getting ahead of the line gets you the job first. So this video is a bit different because it will teach you how to get the best entry-level jobs compared to the usual ones that you see on YouTube, most in-demand jobs in Canada, most high-paid jobs in Canada. I find those videos are Bit misleading for international students who are just planning to come to study in Canada. Uh, here's why. Because some of the jobs listed on those platforms aren't the jobs that you're gonna get. Those in-demand jobs or high-paid jobs, you won't be able to land them right away. For example, a business consultant job, you won't be able to land that right away. A certified professional accountant, you won't land that right away. Just the same way for an engineer. You'll never be a professional electrical engineer or a chemical engineer because in order to become a professional engineer, you need to write the professional engineer exam. And that only happens after you graduate. To become a certified professional accountant needs you to have your CPA certification. And that happens after you graduate. So it's kind of misleading when you see these other videos on YouTube. That's why in this video I'll take a step back from that and show you what are the jobs you can actually get without any certification, without any necessary experience, but be able to build your experience in a way over the four years of your study period or three years so you can land the job right away after graduation. After watching this video, so you will learn what are the two best jobs international students should get when they come to Canada, how much money can you make, should you do co-op, and a special segment on how to use LinkedIn to find job opportunities within your field. So what are the two jobs you should get as an international student? So when you come as an international student to Canada, one of the biggest struggles you will go through is being able to speak to Canadians. You don't know the language, you don't really get their accent, you don't really get how to engage with them in a conversation. The, the style of conversation is a bit different. Just to understand how they speak and getting the speed of how they talk, it takes a little bit of getting used to. So where I'm going with this is that you want to get a job that is customer service centric so that you're exposed to talking to people a lot. Initially, it's gonna be a bit hard, but over time, you're gonna get used to it. The more you talk to people, the more you will know about how to talk to Canadians, their culture, their style, 
well. And the best job that exposes you to talking to a lot of people will be a sales representative job or a customer service rep job. So what do you do as a sales rep? You sell. And what do you sell? You could be selling products, you could be selling services, you could be selling face-to-face, -face, you could be selling over the telephone, you could be working at kiosks in different events. You can work directly with a company or work with marketing agencies who will be sending you to different places. You could be in a customer service centric job, you could be working at the bank as a teller or even work with your students association body within your university or college that will expose you to speaking to a lot of Canadians and help you improve your English, help you improve your accent and just the way you talk. And that way you'll be getting a lot of exposure and build experience on your resume. So how much does it pay? So the structure works like this. You can get a base pay, which is $15 to $18 per hour. And the more you sell, the more commission you get. And if you're a good salesperson, you could be making $23 to $26 per hour. And if you want to work full-time as a student, you can only do that during summertime and could be making three to $5,000 per month. One job I will ask you to stay away from would be door-to-door -door sales trip or any job that pays you commission only those jobs are honestly not the best jobs and not the most rewarding jobs and you kind of waste time doing those jobs what you need in order to get those jobs literally nothing they really just check if you're a great person if you're outspoken if you're outgoing you can talk to people that's all that matters for a b2c sales rep job in order to get those jobs let's say you see a job post online just basically look up the company see who's a recruiter and give them a call send them a resume it's very easy uh, and make sure to keep calling them till you get in touch with them because they get so many resumes that sometimes your resume is just lost in the pile of other people's resumes so keep calling them send them an email personally and some things to be cautious about is don't do any door-to-door -door sales jobs it's really not worth it going out in the field knocking on people's doors door-to-door -door jobs aren't the most fun jobs out there to do and also don't work at retail jobs it really doesn't look that great on your resume unless it's a global brand like Apple those experiences count because they train you very well but yeah that's that for sales rep next best job for students to get become a recruiter so when you become a recruiter you get trained to interview people and help them get jobs guess what that does to you you know how to land jobs in the future and I highly recommend every international student to become a recruiter at least for once so that you know every tricks in the books to land any job that you want. So how much does it pay? You can make up to $38 to $50,000 per year or $16 to $18 per hour as a junior recruiter. It's one of the best jobs you can get as an international student because you're gonna go through training on how to interview people, what to expect as an answer from those people and how to analyze those answers so that when you apply for other jobs in the future, you can come up with amazing answers that the recruiter might like and you will actually get the job that you want. To become a recruiter, work with recruiting agencies. I work with Hayes. There are other recruiting agencies out there like Excel HR, Robert and Half. If you have zero experience, look out for some local recruiting agencies within your area and apply to work with them. What is the best time to become a recruiter? As soon as possible. As soon as you get here, become a part-time recruiter or just work full-time during summer. So those are the two best jobs I recommend international students to get when they come here. Guys, if you want to land that perfect job after graduation and you don't have any prior experience, you're not going to be able to land it. Because the first thing that goes on your resume is your experience. And if you have nothing to start off with, you're not going to be able to apply. So you need to make sure that you build that kind of experience before you graduate so you can just basically transition into the job you want. So there are some jobs that I'd recommend doing. For example, it could be an administrative assistant job, it could be a receptionist job, it could be a merchandiser at a retail store. It's because those kind of jobs doesn't really allow you to grow and it's kind of stagnant. You don't really pick up uh, new skills and the career advancement opportunities aren't truly really there. So you can put that on your resume, but it doesn't really add value to your resume as much as working at the jobs I mentioned earlier. So should you do co-op? Here's my opinion. So co-op is basically a system set up by the school where a lot of students with great CGPAs apply for jobs that are available within companies. I'm not a big fan of co-ops because first of all, it filters out all the people that have average results. So if you have average results, you have no shot at co-op. When you're applying for co-op, you're basically just put in a pool where people select you from a system and you're not having face interaction with the actual employer. So that's why I'm not a big fan of it because a system determines your opportunity of being able to land a job. And for international students, even being able to pursue a co-op, you need to apply for a co-op work permit. So it adds an extra layer of work that you have to do with immigration. So that's why I'm not a big fan of co-op because first of all, you have to get, get a co-op permit. Second, most of my friends who got co-op jobs ended up with a job that they actually did 
didn't like because you, when you apply for co-op you're not really sp applying for a specific job it's for a lot of jobs you cannot really personalize the kind of job you're applying for and the other thing is the system determines your luck and I'm a guy who believes in making my own luck and I don't want a system to do that for me so that's why I don't refer a co-op I would rather go and reach out to local companies and tell them hey here's my skill sets here's a value that I can add to your company here's my resume here's what I can do for you would you like to hire me do that for 10 companies guess what you're gonna end up with a job that you actually might love doing and they might hire you down the road full-time and most of the co-op jobs out there are kind of administrative so that's why I'm not a big fan of that but Good students always love doing co-op. I have, I'm not saying that don't do it, but that's my take on it. So now it's time for the special segment where I show you how to use LinkedIn to find the opportunities that's relevant to your field. So how this works is basically you're gonna go on LinkedIn, you're gonna type in search bar the program that you're applying for. Let's say you're applying for accounting. So you go for accounting and you go into the people's tabs then you find a few people who have that in their bio and now they're working at a company. Then you go into those people's profiles and what you want to see is what jobs did they have before the one that they currently have, which will tell you what kind of jobs they had to go through in order to get the current job that they have. Also what you want to do is you want to change the city to the city you're applying for in the search filter. And there you have it. Do research on a couple of people and you will have the perfect map for your career as to how you want to land the job that you want or even better you can search in the search bar you can basically type in the title that you want type in the future job that you want the future title let's say you want to be an account manager so you go to an account manager person's profile and you basically work backwards and see what kind of jobs they worked before that account manager job in order to land the account manager job. So that's some research. And why is it important to know that position is because in order to land the job that you want down the road, if you don't know the position, you don't know what you're applying for. So that's basically a great way to map out your own career pathway for the job that you want to land after graduation or even 10 years after graduation. So guys, key takeaways from this video. If you know which program you're applying for or the title you want in the future go on LinkedIn search up a few people map out their journey and basically try to copy that for your own so that you can get the job that you want after graduation and if you have any questions for that just comment below or message me on Instagram second work in a sales job or a customer service centric job or become a recruiter when you get here being in a sales job will help you understand how Canadians talk, their style of conversation, how to engage with them in a conversation, and how to keep the conversation going. And when you become a recruiter, you know what it takes to actually get hired. Remember, the price from studying super hard is not just the grades, it's your career. It's what you do after graduation. It's the dream job that you get to land or the business that you get to create. The great grades, the certificate are just a nice thing to hang on the wall, but it really doesn't do anything for you. Some students think that getting good grades opportunities will come their way. That will never happen for you. Instead of waiting for opportunities to come your way, work hard to create opportunities for yourself and make your own luck. Start planning, keep on strategizing, try to map things out, connect the dots. Remember, strategy drives structure. Reach out to me if you have any questions anytime and don't forget to download the cost of study guide which is in the description the next video will be on how to get jobs with zero experience as an international student so make sure to subscribe so you'll get notified when i upload that and follow me on instagram at site underscore zihad and hopefully you like this video and that being said i'll see you guys in the next video ciao